yeah, the growth of businesses. Uh, I'd like to share with you tonight something that I've been doing uh, with Sharon here for 25 years now in hundreds of businesses. And what we've done in these last years is actually distill the essence of what works in every single business. So it doesn't matter whether you're a small business, a self-employed person, it doesn't matter whether you're in partnership, it doesn't matter whether you're a PLC, this material will work every time it is used. So I'd like to start off, if I may, by asking you if anybody here in the audience has ever been involved in a committed relationship with somebody else. <laughs> Excellent. That's wonderful. What a, what a super reaction. Neil, can you, I'd like to take you back to your first date with this person, okay? Can you remember where you met this person that you're thinking of right now? I would have liked to, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. You can remember. Excellent. Robin, can you remember what you talked about? You think so? This is impressive. Viv, can you remember, you know, where, where, how did this happen? Did somebody set it up or was it a chance meeting? Yes, I remember. Chance meeting. Chance meeting. This is, this is good stuff. Well, Gail, can you remember why you wanted to see this person again? <laughs> yes. You can. Now, this whole process that we've just been talking about in a committed relationship is, I, I call it clarifying direction. In other words, none of us would be with the people that we live with or are with if we did not clarify direction in the first instance. So that's the very first stage in any relationship between two people. And then as time goes by, the word trust arises. Trust is always going to be there somewhere. It could be to do with money. You know, is it my money? Is it your money? Is it our money? What's going on here? It could be to do with doing what we say we do in this relationship. You know, we say we're going to do this, we, we're going to cut the grass, but actually we're down the pub watching Manchester United beat Arsenal. You know, it's, 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 trust is a funny thing. Is it, it could be about fidelity. Is it between this relationship between two of us or, or three of us or four? What's going on, you see? So if we get over the hurdles around trust, as time goes by, the weeks, the months, the years, we can move on to the third section, which is about the relationship itself, the performance, the enjoyment, the happiness. And really, that, that third section only comes if we've got the direction right in the first place and the trust right in the second, because if we haven't got those two bits placed, you can't have the relationship for long. Believe me, I'm divorced. You know, a divorce happens somewhere between direction and trust, and it might happen after six months, six years, or, you know, any period of time. Now, the reason I want to share that little uh, start with you is simply that that model applies to every single business. I've ever worked with. We have to start off by clarifying direction. We need to know where the business is actually going. And then we move around to trust, which is to do with the relationships in the business with our colleagues, our staff, our stakeholders, and our customers. And if we can achieve that, we can move around to performance. And performance is about sales and profit for most businesses. I mean, I work in schools, and their performance is about an Ofsted grade. I, work for, I did this work for the Institute of Directors recently. Theirs is about membership. You know, they've got so many members now, and they want to have so many more members in three years' time. So I don't mind what your measure of performance actually is, but we have to clarify it. And we start off with clarifying direction of the business. Now, the practical steps of clarifying direction are very, very straightforward. But what you actually need there in the room, and I always advise you to sort of go off-site somewhere, a sort of hotel room to clarify direction. You need the senior team there. And the senior team is the directors, but there could be one or two key managers. It's the people who take responsibility for delivering results in the business. So it could be two of you, it could be three of you, it could be five of you. But the key questions you've got to address are, what do we want to be? Because in today's world, and I guess Sharon and I are in about 50 clients at the moment, 50 businesses we work with, not every day, obviously, but once a week or once a month or whatever it may be. What do we want to be is product and service. And all these clients are looking at business as usual, which is the stuff we do do as business as usual, but everybody's looking at new products, new ways of doing things, new routes to market, new ways of communicating with customers, you know, new ways of adding value. Viv and I were, were talking about this just before the meeting began. How do we do this stuff? So what do we want to be in terms of products and service is a crucial question. But the second question is how much of it? Because in simple terms, if we're here today in September 2011 and the senior team want to be there in September 2014, we've got to agree on the numbers. 
you cannot have one director or one partner wants it like that, somebody else wants it like that, and somebody else wants a flight past the bullseye looks like this. I mean, I remember a firm of actuaries, the other side of Birmingham, and we were doing this work one morning. It was, it was the second morning we'd come together, and it was an extraordinary event because I, I've never had quite had anything like this happen, but the senior partner had been there for 32 years. He suddenly slammed his fist on the table. He said, right, enough of this. I need you to know that I want to be out of this practice within six months, and if my mother-in-law dies before then, I want to go earlier. That's what he said. Can you believe that? It, it was like a, somebody throwing a hand grenade into the room. You know, one of the lady partners started to cry. A couple of the guys went out and, you know, didn't come, had a cigarette and came back. I mean, it was quite... There's a senior partner who's been there for 32 years suddenly saying he's had enough. And this happens all the time in businesses. People don't talk about this, these sort of things. But in today's world, we have to be more transparent. We have to be more open and honest with one another because the speed of change in the world is so fast that if we're not open and honest and transparent, we can get caught out by markets changing, businesses changing, clients going bust, or whatever it may be, you see. So what do we want to be is question number one. How much of it is question number two? And question number three is for whom? And again, we've got to be focused on the sort of customers we can serve and the sort of customers we can't, because there's time wasters out there. So we're all looking for good quality customers, because if we don't get more or bigger or better customers, we won't be able to hit the bullseye in three years' time. So again, we have the discussion around the senior team. What is it we're going to do in our contemporary marketing strategy? What does contemporary marketing mean? What's that all about? Contemporary marketing, anybody? Everybody knows what marketing is. What about contemporary marketing? It's about blogs. It's about videos. It's about Facebook. It's about Twitter. You know, um, somebody said to me, because um, it's usually somebody else who gives me ideas, they, they said, you know, this was a few months ago, why don't you, uh, you, you've been writing blogs for five years, why don't you tie those into a video and put a theme on it and then sell it to businesses? And we've been doing this for six months, and every person who runs a business that said, listen, I'll come and interview you, Neil's, Neil's going to do the filming, and I'll write the blog, how do you fancy it? They've all said yes. It's a new income stream, for goodness sake. That wasn't there a year ago. So contemporary marketing is about looking at all the amazing things that are going on in the world and saying, how can we use this world, this information, this system to generate sales and profit? Because most of us in the room, are, 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 are measures of success are, are sales and profit. Profits. So we have to be able to clarify direction. We need the senior team in the room. This model of direction, first of all, We'll move on to trust, as I said when I talked about the, 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 the committed relationship with somebody else. We have to develop trust. And that discussion about the bullseye is absolutely crucial because it's the second stage of this work. You need your colleagues around you. You need to talk about the bullseye. Talk about what it is that you're going to be doing differently to move towards the targets, the ambition that you yourselves have. And if there are differences between the senior people, we need to talk about it. Because at the, at the developed trust stage, it's, you see, this direction is about the business. It's not about the people, it's about the business. But the trust is all about the people. And I'm here to say to you that in today's world, we develop trust by getting closer, closer than ever before to our colleagues closer than ever before to our staff, closer to our stakeholders, and finally, closer to our clients or our customers. It works in that sequence, because if there are issues or things that haven't been agreed or discussed between the colleagues, you will not get it right for your customers. So there are practical ways that you can take away. The bullseye is the best way to clarify direction. Everybody needs a bullseye in order to clarify the direction of their business. Because the clearer you are about your bullseye, the more likely you are to hit the targets that you set, that you agree with people. But on the trust side of things, four groups of people, how do we get closer? Well, the closest, the best way to get close to your colleagues is to have an externally facilitated 360 degree appraisal. That means that you are in the chair as managing director, Around you are other members of your senior team, and somebody from outside, somebody like myself, says, OK, tell me, what have you enjoyed, Dave? You know, you've been in business now for 20 years. What is it that you really enjoy about this business? And then maybe, what is it that frustrates you? What is it that kind of you, you, you change if you could? And I'm looking, as the outsider, at the eyes and the body language, the movement of everybody else in the room. 
And out of that discussion, the managing director, within about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, will come out with three development points. Things that they can do better to improve the performance of their business. Because how on earth can you improve the performance of your business like that unless the managing director or the senior part is prepared to look in the mirror and say, yes, I can improve my performance as well. And then I move on to the next director or the next manager. And lo and behold, everybody has their two or three development points. And they're all linked at that level to the bullseye. That's why they're senior people. If they don't have development points linked to the bullseye, why are they in the room? Why are they on the management team? So that's how you get closer than ever before to colleagues. And some of my clients, I mean, Helen Thomas at Western Cider, she said to me, what do we do with this, Tim? Now we've done it. I said, what do you want to do with it? She said, well, I don't know. I haven't been here before. I said, well, why don't you stick it on the notice board? So she picked up all the development points from all her directors and stuck them on the notice board. When a managing director does something as courageous, outrageous as that, you never ever have any problem with appraising anybody in your business. And you get alignment so that everybody is on this journey towards self-improvement, because if it's good enough for the managing director, it's good enough for anybody. That's how it works. And then there's your staff. We've got to get closer than ever. The only way to get staff closeness is to get somebody to come in and do a staff survey. There's only 10 questions on it, but you ask staff to score four. This always happens. Three, it usually happens. Two sometimes, one rarely, and zero, it never happens. And so questions like, you know, do you feel that your contribution to this business is valued and respected? That's an extraordinarily powerful question. And staff will not only put the score down, because that's what I ask them to do, but they'll put comments. And I say, don't worry about putting your name on, although I've had the most amazing young people, staff, who say, why not? I've got no problem. This is all about openness and honesty. There's my name. But the fact is that those scores will tell you which of the areas that staff are happy about in your business and which are the areas that need to actually improve. That's how you get closer to staff. You go back, you say, this is the survey, this is the score we got, these are the comments, because I get them in handwriting and then I put them on a computer so nobody can tell who said what, because I disguise it. But you know what your staff then feel and you can then take steps to improve that. Next to stakeholders. I can't tell you how many times people work with lousy stakeholders. You know, we got an accountant, and by the way, this is somebody that my sister's brother, my sister's friend, best friend went out with when he was at school before he went to college, and by the way, he's 23 and wears red socks. I mean, why do you choose an accountant like that? You've got to have stakeholders who are on a journey towards excellence in their field of expertise. So I don't care whether your stakeholder is a web designer, I don't care whether he's a cameraman, I don't care whether he's your accountant, or anything you care to mention, because a stakeholder's on, not on the payroll, right? It's somebody you pay for their expertise. But they've got to be on a journey towards excellence. You say to yourself, who else do they work for? What do their testimonials say? How proactive are they? And if they're not doing it, you change them. Because this world isn't, is an unforgiving place. There isn't room to have lousy stakeholders. Or people that you, you know are just there because they're a relative or a friend that you used to know 10 years ago. It just doesn't work anymore. And then, of course, you're ready to get closer to customers and clients, the most important people, perhaps, of all, because they're the ones that are going to enable us to hit this bullseye. And that, too, is a customer survey. With the same scoring system, four for excellent, three for good, two for adequate, one for poor, zero for abysmal, how would you rate the quality of the products that we deliver to you? That's what I asked last week in London when I was doing this work for a a firm that delivers food around London. It's all organic food. It's all vegetarian food. And I got the chefs of organizations to give me the scores and the comments. And that's fed back to the managing director, who now knows exactly what a sample of his customers and clients thinks about the performance of that business. You can see what it's about. It's about having the courage to look into the mirror with your colleagues, your staff, and your stakeholders, and your customers, four groups of people, because the way to develop trust in this world is to get closer than ever before to those four people. It, mean, it means intimacy. It's an extraordinary thing. You know, we didn't have to do any of this stuff 30 years ago. But this is about the growth of businesses. This is about taking the business somewhere where it hasn't been before. 